Advanced Total Body Wellness is a neurosomatic therapy practice. And what is neurosomatic therapy? Um, I get this question all the time. First of all, people can't pronounce it. And second of all, they have no idea what it is. So it is a non-invasive, corrective, manual soft tissue therapy based on each individual patient's um, anatomy and physiology. Um, our treatment goal for our patients is to find the source of our patient's pain and correct um, health issues by restoring postural imbalances. Um, our mission is to determine the source of our patient's pain and dysfunction, which most of the times is not where they're feeling the symptom of their pain. It's to restore their postural health by releasing the affected soft tissues, causing dysfunction, and allowing our patients to live active and pain-free lives by maintaining healthy postural balance. So next slide, please. Um, and we've already kind of gone through, Sharon already went through all of this, so I'm not gonna bore you with reading through all of this stuff. Um, I will tell you that I have a background in art. I am an artist, I'm a professional artist. Um, and when I was approached after my son started getting treated about becoming a neurosomatic therapist, my first response was, um, no, there's no way I could possibly be a health healthcare provider because I don't, that's not my background. Um, however, what I've found is that my experience in art has allowed me to um, creatively problem solve my patients my patients' issues. It's allowed me to uh, have this kinesthetic process to. Um, physically affect the change in people's bodies. And um, it has become this amazing component to uh, really balance my art practice and my neurosomatic therapy practice with my passion to help people feel better and um, live happier, healthier lives. So it, it's been a it's been a crazy journey. It was um, almost impossible for me to learn all of the anatomy and physiology that we are required to know, um, but I did it, and I love what I do in my office. I love the outcome that I've had um, in helping people uh, relieve their pain, and um, it's been very very rewarding. So I'm grateful. I'm not grateful that my son had the issues, but I'm really really grateful that I. I found this work for him and now I'm trained and I'm able to do this for other people. So next slide, please. All right, so neurosomatic therapy is a different approach. It's a different approach to the body. Um, if you have suffered from chronic pain or you know somebody who's suffered from chronic pain, a lot of times the answer that they're given from a traditional healthcare uh, practitioner is that your pain is idiopathic or that there's no known cause to why you're feeling the discomfort in your body. Um, advanced total body wellness and, uh, oh, and you know what, I'm sorry, Diane has the old PowerPoint, which will continue to um, bring up advanced total body wellness instead of making this a generic presentation. So um, our approach to uh, our patients is that we, we um, approach the entire body and it differentiates us from other health and wellness professionals instead of looking simply at the symptom of what you're feeling. Uh, most healthcare professionals will treat your pain symptoms with medication and or surgery without determining or treating the source of your pain. Um, our focus is really on finding and treating the anatomical or structural dysfunctions in your body that can influence posture, function, and uh, which causes pain and other health issues. Um, finding and treating the source of pain is often a solution to our, um, our patients' pain symptoms, which traditional healthcare providers couldn't provide. So next slide, please. Okay, so is your foundation faulty? And what does this actually mean? So there are many reasons why the body deviates from healthy posture alignment. It can be related to trauma, sports-related injuries, dental procedures, um, poor intestinal health, 
stress. Everybody's feeling has, I know lots of people have been feeling very stressed over the last several months. Um, it can also be from inactivity or sitting for long periods of time, which again, you know, I'm seeing a lot of that with the people coming in my doors recently that, you know, they're just not as active as they used to be because of the whole COVID situation. Um, or it can be from structural abnormalities. And one important uh, abnormality that we look at and is often overlooked by other healthcare professionals is lower leg length inequality or one leg being shorter than the other. Um, if one leg is shorter than the other, the body will adjust resulting in postural distortions, which can cause pain throughout the body. So if you can imagine, these are the, the heads of the top of your femur, your leg. If one is shorter than the other, your pelvis will be tilted. And then what will happen is you will see your spine start to correct and adjust, um, causing potentially causing a small scoliosis, or if it's more severe, it can cause a more severe scoliosis so that your eyes are level with the horizon. Your body wants to keep you level with the horizon. So your body will adjust for um, the structural difference in your legs. So next slide, please. Treatment goals. So um, our therapists strive to restore our patient's postural balance, um, eliminate pain, preventing you from enjoying your daily life, and also achieve your physical and athletic goals. Um, restoring your postural balance will reduce the stress on joints, cartilage, and discs that over time, if they're worn um, or there's stress in those areas, may need surgery to repair. Um, we wanna keep your body moving. We wanna keep you healthy and active and um, improve the health of your muscles and soft tissue to prevent injuries associated with postural distortions. Um, and in a lot of my patient situations, I want to assist in achieving their athletic goals. I treat a lot of athletes that are performing at high levels. And um, when they have postural imbalances, sometimes it's difficult for them to perform at those levels. So next slide, please. Okay, what can you expect from your session? So neurosomatic therapy treatment um, starts by creating individualized treatment plans to address our patient's specific needs and to create lasting change through nervous system repatterning, repattern, nervous system and muscular repatterning. Um, we focus on treating uh, all of the soft tissue in your body that's affected, which means muscles, tendons, and ligaments, uh, fascia, which is a connective tissue that runs throughout your entire body. It wraps around every muscle fiber, every muscle spindle. Um, it's really, it, it's everywhere. And when it's dysfunctional, it can actually be very painful. And we also treat organs. Um, we utilize specialized uh, therapy techniques to restore postural imbalances, which can include targeted deep tissue massage, myofascial release, trigger point therapy, and uh, joint mobilization and stretching. Next slide, please. Okay, so as far as what you can expect from your session, uh, each patient is um, interviewed very thoroughly, and we do a detailed postural assessment. So listening to our patients provides therapists a better understanding of what our patients are actually feeling in their body, what their symptoms are. Um, the detailed postural assessment helps therapists to uncover dysfunctional muscular and structural biome biomechanical patterns, which helps us reveal the source of your pain. So the symptom of your pain may not be where your pain is originating from. And in fact, most cases, it, it, that's what we find. So we do a full body assessment um, to determine how gravitational pull may affect a patient's posture. So we assess a patient um, in the standing position from head to toe, uh, front to back, and we assess them seated um, to see if there are changes there and also lying down where uh, gravity is affecting your body in very different ways. And again, the lying down position is head to toe, front to back, um, so that we can see, we have a, a very thorough understanding of what is actually happening in your body and um, what muscles are shortened and what muscles are, are elongated. So next slide. 
Um, so the measurements and charting, we do an 84, oh, this is kind of a repeat, I apologize. It's an 84 point assessment. Um, it helps us discover the dysfunctional muscular patterns um, and it's done in three positions, standing, seated and lying down. So next slide, please. Okay, so here is a really good example of, and I'm gonna slide this over so I can see here. It's a really good example of what happens in my office when I meet a patient and we start to determine um, what is happening in their body. Um, I go through a detailed patient interview, listening to all of the pain complaints, um, discomforts, uh, worries, concerns of my patients, um, take detailed notes on that. I complete the 84 point uh, postural assessment and then it's charted. So not only do I complete the assessment, but then I document what it is I'm seeing in each of my patients. And that really becomes the roadmap for therapists to uh, determine the hidden sources of pain. So you can see in this, in this image, anywhere a line is, is um, angled, that's where a distortion is seen or determined. Um, the dots uh, indicate rotational patterns in the body. Um, you'll see the AA and C2, that is um, assessing the cervical health of each of our patients. So where the, um, the top two vertebrae sit on top of each other, if you can see my hand, whether there's rotation, tilt, projection forward or a shearing to the side. Um, so it is really a very thorough, thorough, um, not only assessment, but charted visual to allow us to be able to determine where your muscles are in dysfunction and what needs to be treated. Um, it's also used to help educate our patients on postural distortions and their compensations that they're having in their body. Um, one of the key elements that I really love, especially after treating a person um, for four to six weeks, is that we have a record of not only where their body started as far as dysfunction and, um, and postural imbalances, but it gives us a clear record. Uh, you can see that after each patient, I go in and then I chart the muscles that were treated um, in the session so that I have a record of treatment and the effectiveness on, on, the, um, on the progress of, of the actual treatment. So, um, so it's a very clear, concise, um, quantifiable source for us to use to track the effectiveness of um, treatment and uh, postural corrections. So next slide, please. Okay, so from your session, we will talk a lot about patient participation. And not only is it important to actually have th the therapist relieve the muscles that um, need to be uh, lengthened or um, released, it's equally as important for the pa patient to participate in their own health and wellness. Um, therapists will empower and educate our patients to um, participate, to be active in their health, um, to prevent recurrence of injury. Uh, we will often demonstrate different stretches or strength training exercises to complement the work that's being, that the therapist is doing. And um, we'll also uh, educate our patients on how to maintain postural balance, which will support the treatment outcomes. So next slide. Ah, what do we treat? Uh, so I get this question a lot because typically when people hear the term neurosomatic massage therapy, they're thinking relaxive massage and they're going to come in and they're going to take a nap and feel nice and relaxed when they're, when they're done. Um, neurosomatic therapy is a corrective approach to massage um, and we treat all soft tissue throughout the entire body. So hip and joint pain, leg length inequality, which I've touched on a little bit, we actually treat the leg length inequality um, by determining the, the millimeter, down to the millimeter of difference between your legs and uh, requiring our patients to wear a lift in their shoe to stabilize them. 
Uh, we treat low back pain, migraine headaches. I see a lot of migraine headache patients, neck pain. Um, if, if you have one of these cell phone and you are constantly looking down at your phone, you have shortened all of your anterior neck muscles and you could potentially end up with a tremendous amount of pain in the back of your neck. So we treat neck pain, tennis elbow, thoracic outlet syndrome, um, carpal tunnel syndrome, which is actually kind of an interesting, and this kind of goes along with plantar fasciitis, is an interesting thing because people will, will come in and they've been diagnosed with these conditions. However, what I found is that um, the muscles that uh, the, the actual ligaments that attach to the muscles and tendons um, are being strained because the muscles need to be released. So oftentimes I find that if I release the muscle and give the patient um, some relief in their soft tissue, it will either get rid of the, um, the syndrome or fasciitis, or it will help to, um, help to ease that pain. Um, so treating carpal tunnel syndrome, military neck or loss of cervical curve also happens a lot when people's heads are projected forwards. We do that. Um, I treat uh, menstrual cramps and uh, heavy bleeding or uh, menstrual issues. I can also treat the pain associated with hernia, uh, disc herniation and bulging, uh, frozen shoulder syndrome, syndrome, sciatica, scoliosis, as I had mentioned with my son, can actually be treated with neurosomatic therapy, um, scapular weighing, and, and the, the, the list goes on. And there's more even than what's on this list. But this gives a really good um, idea of the depth and breadth of what it is I can do as a neurosomatic therapist. So next slide, please. Uh, patient success story. So this, you know, I didn't want to bore everybody by droning on for hours and hours. And I really only have one success story in this presentation, but I just pulled charts, actually, this stack of charts is from February when I opened my practice. And within this huge stack of charts is lots and lots and lots of individual success stories that I'm, I could go on and on and on about this for a very long time. Um, I've had a lot of success with people with uh, migraine headaches. Um, just recently, I've had um, tremendous amount of success with, um, with people who have had herniated discs or bulging discs and excruciating sciatic nerve pain that has literally laid them out on the floor uh, for a long period of time without being able to move. Um, I've gotten my patients to uh, be able to function again and not have that debilitating pain. Um, a couple of really interesting things that I've done recently, um, I've corrected TMJ dysfunction function of a person who just had their braces removed and their jaw was locking and popping. So by doing external and internal uh, work on the muscles of their mouth, I was able to um, release the muscles affecting the locking of the jaw and um, relieve some of that TMJ dysfunction and pain and popping. Um, which was pretty exciting. I had a really interesting case recently where a patient presented with vertigo and an astagmus, which is jumping of the eye. So, um, you know, as you're looking at the screen or you're looking at somebody, your eye has the ability to focus. With an astagmus, the eye wiggles and it causes uh, blurred vision, double vision, and um, dizziness. And I was able to go in and treat the, the muscles behind the eye on the top and on the bottom. And it relieved my patient's nystagmus and she no longer had the jumpiness and she, her vertigo uh, was relieved. So it's pretty cool. So, you know, along, along with, you know, treating low back and your legs and, you know, your upper body, um, neurosomatic therapy has this really cool ability to treat things that, um, you know, would normally only be treated with medication. So I do want to share this one specific uh, patient success story. 
So I have been treating a 26 year old healthy male uh, for the last six weeks. He is a former FSU distance competitive runner. So he was on scholarship for um, running at FSU. And he had years of injury and pain and he pushed his body to extremes to be able to compete. Um, He presented in my office with debilitating lumbar and thoracic back back pain and also neck pain. He had had an MRI and it confirmed that he had minor bulging discs at L4, L5 and T4. Um, He was also incapable of taking a deep breath and or taking a deep breath without excruciating pain in his ribs on the front of his body and in the back of his body. Um, He had pain throughout his day from the minute he got out of bed and it got worse throughout the day and was debilitating by the time he went to bed at night. Um, He had received injections and had seen several um, healthcare providers and all of the treatment and the injections were ineffective in in not only uh, relieving his pain, but maintaining that relief. So the injections worked for a little bit of time and then really became ineffective after a couple of days. And my patient's suggestion was to um, have, by a back specialist, was to have surgery to correct the bulging discs in his back. Um, so with all of that being said, <laughs> six weeks later, and you can see the, the chart on the left-hand side of your screen is how my patient presented. And he said it was okay for me to share his name, otherwise I would have blocked it out. But Max presented with lots of distortions. Um, he had a uh, depressed right shoulder. He had, uh, he had rotation in oh, his gosh. torso and in his cranium. So his so opposing rotation. Um, he had dysfunction in his hips and rotation at his hips. Uh, one of the keys to his, his low back pain was the small picture in the center of the screen with the two side views of the body. Max had extreme pelvic flexion in his pelvis, which um, was caused by tight quadriceps, mu- quadricep muscles. And um, the result was actually shortening and increasing the lumbar curve in his back, creating low back pain. Um, and his, his distortions didn't change a whole lot as he went into the lying down position. So fast forward six weeks and lots of manual therapy for Max. Um, but only, but again, only six treatments we saw huge changes in his, um, in his postural balances had been restored. He had only a, in the last session, which I just saw him this last week, he had only a slight dipping of his right shoulder. The rotation was gone. Um, his pelvis had leveled out. We had decreased his pelvic flexion down to a more manageable number which for a man, it typically ranges from zero to five degrees. He was at six and seven degrees in his, in his pelvic flexion. So it helped to relieve the pain in his low back. Um, we did send Max for um, a leg length inequality x-ray. It was determined that he didn't have a structural leg length inequality. So doing a lot of work in his hips allowed his, uh, that, hip socket joint and how the the femur is actually resting inside the the joint to be released and evened out um, his foundation, his legs. Um, One of the really cool things uh, was that, and none of this had ever been approached, Max had never been approached by any healthcare professionals about um, treating his lungs his diaphragm and his intercostal muscles, the muscles that go in between his ribs to get rid of that thoracic spine, that thoracic back pain and also the pain in his ribs. So as as a long distance competitive runner, his lung capacity was huge. He he was taking, you know, he needed all of that functioning to be able to perform as an athlete. 
Um, but what had happened over years of that kind of performance, um, he had created spasm and dif- dysfunction in his lungs, diaphragm, and intercostal muscles. So um, the last key component to kind of helping, I mean, we, we had resolved a lot of Max's low back pain very early in treatment. And then we started fine tuning treatment um, to get him out of all of his pain. Um, I started treating his diaphragm and his lungs, which helped to relieve some of the some of the pain he was having in his ribs. And the last key component was actually going in with a tool and treating the intercostal muscles that uh, run between the actual, if you imagine these are ribs, they run in between the actual ribs to control the function of your breathing or to help aid in breathing. Um, after the first time treating his intercostals, the pain in the front of his uh, ribs was completely gone. And after the second time treating his intercostals, the, the pain in his um, in the back of his thoracic area was was gone. So now today, I'm happy to say that Max, um, he wakes up with a little bit of discomfort in the morning. And once he gets moving, he's, he's feeling great throughout the day. His pain does not return. Uh, by the end of the day, after he's had a long active day. Um, and he's really, he's doing great. He, he's one of those ideal patients because he's, he's very active in um, improving his own health and wellness. So he does his homework. I've recommended several different stretches for his hips and his pecs and his uh, latissimus dorsi. Um, He's also gone through sleep training, which can be a really um, awful (laughs) process for many people. If you don't naturally sleep on your back, which is the the preferred best way for you to sleep, if you sleep on your side or even worse, if you sleep on your stomach, um, to train yourself to sleep on your back so that your body is able to kind of heal itself throughout the night and not cause any more strain. It can be a really difficult thing, but he's doing that. And his last little component, I think that will, that will help him completely is um, he's looking at purchasing a new mattress so that he has the proper support while he's sleeping. So he doesn't wake up with that little bit of discomfort. And um, probably within the next couple of weeks, Max is actually gonna start working with a personal trainer. Um, he hasn't been able to exercise in a close to four years three or four years or hasn't been out of pain in three or four years. And um, he is at that point where I will start to transition him into a maintenance program as far as neurosomatic therapy goes and get him moving along with a personal trainer so that he can go off and live happy and healthy and pain-free. So I, um, I love what I do. I love the fact that I'm able to help people um, not only relieve their pain, but live healthier, more active lives. I'm thrilled that I'm able to give patients answers to their pain problems that oftentimes is not addressed by a traditional healthcare uh, practitioner. And um, I'm grateful that I was able to share a little bit about what I do and um, how neurosomatic therapy can can help you or people that you know uh, who are living with pain. So that's it for me, Advanced Total Body Wellness, Angela Stice, I'm a neurosomatic therapist and I love what I do. So questions, does anybody have any crazy questions for me? Hi, Peter. Hi, Hi. Hi, Peter. I I have uh, two questions. Uh, One, do you work with chiropractors? Cause it seems you do some similar things. And then two, can you talk a little bit more about sleeping on your back versus sleeping on your side of your stomach? I've slept on sure. a long Sure. Time. So chiro- neurosomatic therapists and chiropractors share the same concepts. We want your body to be in a healthy postural alignment. Um, they affect change by pushing your bones into place, doing the adjustments. We affect change by um, treating the soft tissue. So your muscles and your brain communicate with each other. Um, so if we are repatterning how your muscles hold your bones in place, some chiropractors truly love when they see a neurosomatic therapist 
either before or after treatment because one, it makes their adjustments easier. And two, it helps their patients hold those adjustments longer. So, um, so yes, yeah, so we actually work really well with chiropractors um, and we share the same principles. So that's the first question. The other question was about sleeping, correct? Yeah, sleep on your back. Why is it important to sleep on your back? So um, sleeping on your back with a pillow underneath your knees and a slight pillow underneath your head, not a pillow that's going to do this to you, um, allows your body to lay in healthier postural alignment while you're sleeping. If you're on your stomach, which is the worst position, your head is probably turned and probably more than likely one leg is kicked out. So you're creating all kinds of rotational patterns, um, which can cause distortion in your cervical spine and throughout the rest of your spine as well. Um, so that's the worst position to sleep in. And um, yeah, well, I was a chronic stomach sleeper until I started doing this work. And I will tell you, the process of going through sleep training when you're a stomach sleeper is really kind of difficult. <laughs> it's really a little painful, but um, it's very beneficial. Sleeping on your side is the second best, um, but I recommend when people are sleeping on their side that they, that they have a pillow between their legs so that you're not causing um, distortion in your hips by one leg coming down. And then also trying to make sure that you have enough pillow to give your neck um, healthy postural alignment. But on your back with a pillow propped under your knee and a small pillow behind your head is the best. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? That's great. Because I yep. sleep on my left side and I have every problem that I have seems to be on my left side. Yes. And I, it's so hard, you know, I'll start laying on my back and then invariably I wake up and I'm on my side. So that's not a challenge, but I know it's something that, that I personally should be doing. Yeah, it's, I hear that a lot. So when you're sleeping on your side, if you don't have like a body pillow that encourages your body to stay in a healthy alignment. And if you don't have that pillow between your knees, a lot of times people are hunched over hugging a pillow or their legs are um, causing some distortion in their hips. So that's why sleeping on your back gets you in um, the correct postural alignment. It, it gets you recentered and reset. That makes sense. I think that could be the reason I have really bad sciatica on my left side. Yep, yeah. Yeah, it, a lot of it can be, I mean, you think about how long you sleep versus, you know, how long you're up moving around and stuff. You're, you're on your, you're in your bed. Well, you, we should be in our bed for six to eight hours. I know a lot of people get a lot more or a lot less sleep than that, but um, yeah, it can cause a lot of dysfunction and pain in your body if you're sleeping improperly. Mm -hmm. I have hey, a question, Angela. Angela. Oh, sorry. Ariel Berg um, put a question in earlier oh. for fibromyalgia and organ and, kid or and organ kidney pain treatment. Yes. So um, I have treated patients with fibromyalgia and um, it's, it's a difficult thing to treat because a lot of it is systemic pain throughout your entire body. Um, yes, there are options to to treat patients with fibromyalgia and kidney and organ pain. Um, and again, it goes back to, you know, a lot of times people will ask me, what's your protocol to treat this symptom? And I really don't have a standard protocol. What I would do is do a complete patient interview and a postural assessment on every patient and treat what I see. See, treat where your dysfunctions are. Um, and what you're complaining of. So, so yes, um, I have treated patients with fibromyalgia and have had some success in relieving, giving some comfort and relieving some of their discomfort. Um, so yes, it is possible. And I do treat organs. So I do treat, um, you know, any of your viscera in your abdomen, I can treat, I can treat your heart, I can treat your lungs. So yeah, it's possible. I think Kimberly, um, had a couple of questions too. She was asking if there's a certain pillow that you would recommend and I'll create a pinched nerve. So if there's a specific pillow, um, you know what, 
I don't typically recommend a specific pillow. I have patients who have tested out several things that have worked well for them, especially if they, if we're trying to encourage them to sleep on their back. Um, I like a firm, larger pillow, like a body pillow to go underneath your knees, because then if you go to roll over, the pillow is there to kind of stop you and encourage you to stay on your back. Um, I have several patients who have used the, the pillows that have um, the cervical curve in that increases the or supports the cervical curve in your back in the back of your neck. Um, really, for me, my my recommendation is to do whatever feels comfortable as far as your head. Um, some people don't like the way that the the curve feels on the back of their neck, and honestly. What I'm most concerned is that you're not, you're not doing this when you're sleeping because your pillow is too big because then you're shortening all of your anterior neck muscles, which can cause pain in the back of your neck. So I don't recommend a specific pillow, but there are things that, that do that my patients have found that have been beneficial. And she, well, she also asked, um, mm -hmm. Any specific treat. exercises you recommend uh, in general? In general, um, not in general. Okay. <laughs> I would re I would refer you to a personal trainer for general um, kind okay. of exercises. I typically refer um, specific exercises to complement what's happening in my patient's body. Okay. So, um, for example, I refer I uh, suggest doing a, it's called the 90-90 hip stretch uh, for increased pelvic flexion, tight hips, um, even low back pain. And it's kind of an intense stretch, but um, that's, that's something that I recommend quite often. Or quite often. Um, a lot of times as well, I have patients who are, we, uh, I know I do this because I'm treating people, my arms are out here, right? And they're in front of me. Um, anybody who sits on a computer or is constantly looking on their phone, right? So any kind of motion coming forward with your shoulders can cause discomfort and pain in your back. So I, I educate my patients a lot on agonist and antagonist muscles. They can work together and they can fight each other. Um, if you're having symptoms of pain in your upper back, but you do a lot of work that causes you to sit like this, like working on your keyboard. Um, for me, I'm a cyclist and an artist and um, I treat people. So all of this is pulled forward. I, I not only release the muscles in the anterior portion of my patient's body, so their chest muscles, their pecs, um, but then I encourage them to do muscles like a pec stretch. So if you can imagine, I'll back up a little bit so you can see, putting your arm at 90 degrees here in a doorway or, or an area where you can push through, you kind of lunge through and open up these pec muscles. Mm -hmm. um, it's beneficial. And then if you even rate increase it about, you know, 10 to 15 degrees here and step through again, it will give a deeper stretch in through the lower push portion of your pec muscles. Nice. So all of the exercises and stretches that I give are, are really specific to what the person, what the dysfunctions are in my patient's body. And um, it typically goes along with um, enhancing the treatment that I've already given them. Uh, one, one other question. My daughter, uh, she lives up in Gainesville and her mother and, and uh, I had a, a client of mine the other day, she lives in Canada. She says, oh, I have a migraine headache. So the world stops. Is there anything for like, um, uh, I don't know, breathing exercise or some kind of exercise. I, I don't know. Every, I'm sure it, it, uh, you know, migraine is caused by multiple different things, but is there mm -hmm. any kind of thing that can give instant relief for a migraine headache? Um, neurosomatic therapy. Uh -huh. Yeah. But like, <laughs> they're at home now and they're like, Oh, I can't do that. I can't function. Is yeah. There... So, so a lot of times I find with my migraine patients, um, they have dysfunctional patterns in the top two vertebrae of their cervical spine. Right. So their C1, C2 um, can be 
I mean, it can have multiple different distortions. And what happens in those areas is that they're with those distortions, they're restricting blood flow and the nerves that come out of their cervical spine, which can um, increase the pressure in their, in their cranium and cause terrible migraine headaches. Um, TMJ dysfunction can cause terrible migraine headaches. Um, vision issues can cause terrible migraine headaches. Um, as a neurosomatic therapist, correcting those distortions in their neck and their cranium works wonders to treat migraine headaches without medication. Because a lot of my patients who come into my office that have migraines are on these horrendous narcotics, terrible, yeah. terrible pain medicines that um, not only is the migraine often debilitating, but then they take these, this heavy medication on top of it and they're laid out flat for, you know, hours or even a day. Zombies. Um, yeah. So um, meditation is very good. It's not, um, you know, if you can't get into a neurosomatic therapist's office, into my office, um, meditation, lying on your back, using um, either heat or cold, depending on um, depending on their symptoms and what their comfort level is to help. Um, having a room very quiet and dark lit, dark lit, you know, turning the lights off can help relieve some of that. But in most cases, when they don't have access to somebody like me, who's a neurosomatic therapist that can do the physical treatment to, um, to prevent migraine headaches or even to relieve a migraine headache, you know, they're stuck with using either over the count pain medications, which may or may not work or taking these, you know, really heavy heavy duty drugs to relieve the pain. Okay, so I have, I have a question and a comment. So the comment is, and I did write it in the chat is after many, many years, my daughter who, um, you know, I get to brag here for just a second. She actually qualified for best athlete in Hillsborough County when she graduated in 2014. I can say she's pretty much a lifelong athlete and has had almost lifelong pain that we just always attributed to she's playing too much soccer. She's playing too much softball. She's overstretched. She's sore. And I don't want to say we were in denial because we definitely sent her to several different experts over the years. So she was just in town for a semester break a couple of weeks ago. And Brooke referred me to Angela, who I already knew was a wonderful person, but I just didn't know very much about neurosomatic therapy. So in the course of one week, um, Darian not only was diagnosed, she's 24, um, Angela definitely thought it was a leg length issue, sent her to have x-rays, and it was a significant leg okay. length issue, shocking to see on the films. And uh, Angela's even gone so far as to make some contacts for follow-up therapy in Los Angeles, where my daughter goes to school. So I just want to thank you. And then here's yeah. the like way open-ended question. Yeah. Do you attribute some of your skills to being an artist? Because just <laughs> even looking at some of those sketches, I would think it would help you with an understanding of how the human body works. Yeah, so it's funny. Um, my former life, before I got married and had kids and was a stay-at-home mom for, gosh, what, 16 years, um, I was a commercial interior designer and my program was heavily based in architecture and structure. So I already had the understanding and the concepts of structure and function and form. Um, didn't have any of the anatomy and health background. Um, but as a commercial interior designer, I was constantly creative problem solving for my clients. Um, Fortune 500 companies, large, large business. I was, I was constantly trying to figure out these creative solutions to their space problems, right? Um, so fast forward, <laughs> um, I'm an artist today. I don't do commercial interior design. Um, my artwork is my visual voice. I love it. It is part of who I am. Um, it's my expression. And so when I was introduced to neurosomatic therapy I, and they said I should go to school, I was like, there's no way. The only thing that I understand about the body 
case, pretty much we have a head, a body, two arms, two legs, and we're good, right? No, there's a whole lot more to it. Um, so my background in art and interior architecture really has helped me not only have a tremendous ability to have the hands-on kinesthetic um, competencies of a neurosomatic therapist and actually I, I'm going to toot my horn I kind of excel at that portion being able to physically treat somebody because I'm used to using my hands but also the other component is that creative problem solving piece I create a problem solve every single time somebody walks into my office and gets on the table I can visualize through a chart what is happening functionally in their body and understand what muscles are um, being pulled tight to cause those distortions and what I need to do to release them. Um, so yeah, so it's funny because I, I, never, I never envisioned being a healthcare provider um, outside of the possibility of me becoming an art therapist and using art to help people deal with their um, personal and emotional issues. Um, but I'm thrilled with how the world has kind of worked and, and the path I've taken because I have kind of two separate lives and careers. I'm an artist. I still love creating art. I create art almost every single day and I get to help people, um, feel better. So it, um, it's worked the way it's supposed to. And I really enjoy both facets and they do complement each other. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Absolutely. I think Michael, Michael, did you have a question? Uh, well, yeah, I've, um, I, I do. Um, and, and I think I need to uh, book a, a consult uh, uh, pretty soon here. But yeah, I've been a lifelong stomach sleeper. And my question would be, uh, I turned 65 in December. So I haven't had problems until recently. Mm -hmm. And I have tremendous pain in my right shoulder when I try to move back like this. Mm -hmm. um, I went to a sports therapist and the sports therapist dug his fingers into my shoulder and created severe pain. But I felt great after he, he, he did that. And he was talking a little bit of the language that you use, the lumbars, the L4, the T5, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and he has, he's very good professional, but I didn't have any x-rays. I didn't have anything, you know, further than that done. And mm -hmm. um, shame on me. I haven't been doing some of the exercises with the little bands <laughs> that he's course. supposed to do, but I've done, I think, enough of them where it, it could strengthen me. So here's the thing. I am a computer guy. What I do for a living requires me to be on the computer a lot. So I sit a lot. And his assumption was I have sat for the last 10 years of my life in my profession. And he said, you're not getting the exercise and therefore it's muscle apath ap atrophy or something. Atrophy. Yes. And, and I needed to strengthen muscles. But I'm not sure about that because I, you know, I'm, I think I'm in pretty good shape and I, you know, I move around pretty good, but um, I, I was just wondering what your, your thought is. And I guess that's probably more uh, something that we need to discuss, discuss during a consult. So. Yeah. So, you know, I'll tell you exactly what I tell all of my patients and that is, we will start with what you're feeling in your body. We'll talk, we'll sit down and hash through every little aches and ache and pain that you have. Mm -hmm. And then I will thoroughly assess your posture. Perfect. And, and doing that assessment is typically the first key to understanding what's happening in your body. You know, just taking from what you described, you're a computer guy, you're constantly sitting. Yeah. you're probably sitting with your arms pulled forward, which means that all of the muscles in your anterior chest, right? And your chest muscles are shortened, right. sure. which sure. then causes stress and strain in your shoulder complex. It elongates, elongates the muscles in your back and you could feel pain or the symptom of your shortened muscles in your back. 
Right. Um, so really, the answer to that question would be, you need to be assessed. We need to talk about what's going on in your body and then make a plan to treat the muscles that are causing the distortions and the discomfort in your body, which may not be actually where the symptom of your pain is. Okay. So that's Very what cool. I, yeah. Never know where they come from, Michael, just letting you know, because, um, so, you know, some of you got my email and I started with Angela when I was, uh, had my herniated disc issue. Like I literally was flat out bawling emergency room three times, had seen three surgeons, wasn't a candidate for surgery because of my size, um, you know, stuff like that. And so we started with that problem. We fixed the sciatic nerve issue, the herniated disc issue that I was having and causing that pain. And then guess what? We find other stuff. Like <laughs> it's just, it's a whole big thing because you're, you're the parts of you that hurt right now are being caused by other parts in your, of your body. And with every, like, you know, me, a lot of people on here know me and you know that I'm pretty much working at a computer 12 to 16 hours a day, seven days a week. And, um, it's just, it's, you know, we know it's not healthy, but we know it's what I have to do to get done what I have to get done. Right. But, um, seeing, I see Angela once a week. I have been since, uh, what begin ish beginning ish of June. Um, yeah. Has it and, only been that short of a time? Yeah, I know, right? Um, <laughs> okay, wow. But yeah, so it was about June when she opened back up um, after COVID and stuff. And so I've been seeing her since then. I've gotten Sarah in to see her. Sarah has hu uh, huge migraine issues. She's the vertigo one you were talking about, right? Um, yep. And all of these weird, uh, she's like double jointed and hyper extended and all these different things. Um, and I'm ex super excited for her to start seeing my mom when she gets here because my mom has had a double hip replacement um, and she is in constant pain with strength issues too. So, um, and there's boots. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's, you have to listen to your body and honestly, like, this is the first time in my entire life and I've always been healthy, but this is the first time I've ever been able to actually know what my body was trying to say so that I could communicate it to get it fixed. And, you know, the best thing about Angela is that when she's working on you, she tells you exactly what she's doing. Mm -hmm. She tells you what muscles she's working. And so that the next time you come in, you can quite literally be able to um, tell her what it is you need her to work on because you've learned uh, your body more along with her. And, um, and it's a huge asset to have. So, and Michael, she's like, seriously, she's right here out of um, works out of Cooper performance, um, right on waters and near the veterans. So she's really close to all of us here. Good. Very cool. Yeah. I took notes uh, of the muscles between the ribs, the, uh, the intercostals. Intercostals, yes. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's funny because when I work with, um, typically what happens is I will um, work on a patient's major pain issues and uh, relieve those symptoms. And what will happen is then we'll start fine tuning. So, you know, you're no longer feeling your sciatic nerve pain or your low back pain, but oh, now, now that that major debilitating pain is gone. I'm feeling discomfort somewhere else. And we'll look at the body again and determine what other areas need to be adjusted and fixed. So um, I am constantly problem solving and Brooke is right. I talk my patients, I talk through the session the entire time, not only to describe what, it, what the treatment is going to be, but also to, um, basically gauge their uh, pain tolerance. Um, sometimes the, the treatment can be a little bit uncomfortable. Um, so we're in constant communication. I'm always talking about the muscles and where, you know, where it starts and where it attaches and what it does. And so it's, it's constant communication between me and my patients throughout the hour long session.